High Tech Hookup. On this episode of High Tech Hookup, host Gregory Evans shows you how to transform your ordinary car into a mobile version of Air Force One. Reporter Catherine Taylor takes us into the magical world of the motion picture editor. And ride along with Aziz McKinney on a private tour of the newest BMW, courtesy of Beverly Hills BMW. All this and much more coming up on High Tech Hookup. Is this a game or is it real? What's the difference? Hi, this is Gregory Evans, and this is another episode of High Tech Hookup. Now today, we're going to see some of the most advanced technology and the hottest cars on the market. Myself, I'm a true road warrior. That means I travel with PDA phones, laptops, I even keep extra antivirus software in the back of my trunk. But the problem is, is I was never organized, so I came here to Willie Motoring. Matter of fact, let me introduce you to the owner, Big Willie himself. How you doing, Willie? Hey, Greg, how are you? All right. Great. Listen, Willie. Before we begin and you show me what you've done for me, mm -hmm. tell me, name some of the stars that you've done. Oh, we've done plenty. Uh, Jessica Alba, name one. She's doing really well right now. Uh -huh. John Sally. Okay. Uh, Rod Martin plays for the Raiders. He's retired, of course. Right. Uh, uh, quite a few. Okay. We've got to keep it a little private. Well, now Greg Evans, too. Yeah, Greg Evans, of course. <laughs> All right, show me what you've done. Yeah, look, I think you're really going to be happy with this. I hope so. Uh-oh, it looks good. Yeah. Looks like real that good. Is, yeah, this is real good. Suede, baby. Ah. How do you like that? Ah. We have everything that you need. Bam, right, right here. here. Now, what about power? Oh, power. We got you coming here. We have an AC to DC power inverter, as well as a cigarette lighter adapter that you can always turn on and off. So I'm always hot. You're always hot. So it can charge while the car is still off. It can off. charge while the car is still off. Yeah, I like but that. But more importantly, you know what, Greg, I've been meaning we were doing a project and we're happy to do projects for you, but mm -hmm. why, why in the trunk of the car? What you mean? Well, why have your computer in the trunk of the car when we can do it inside the car? What, and have to flip out the dash, that'll be hot, though. Oh, no, 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 no. Totally integrated into the car. Oh, I got to see this. Let me show you. Oh, I got to see this. You know I got some tricks on my sleeve. Yeah, I got to Greg, now this is something you're really going to like. This is the next generation in mobile electronics and media. Let's see what you're talking about. All right. Hold on to your hat. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This is Ryan from Via Link. Hey, what's Ryan? up? Hey, how, Greg, you, how you doing? Nice right. to meet you. Let me see what we're playing with. OK, so what we got going on here is we have an onboard vehicle computer. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you're a techie. And I know you love your laptop, right? Hold on, hold on. What operating system are we running? We're actually using Windows XP here. But you're not going to see Windows XP, because Windows XP actually is in the background now. We are using the front end to easily allow you to navigate through all your programs while you're in the vehicle. OK, show me my options. Okay, I see well, you got music right there. First off, yes, we do have music. But one thing, let me point out to you, that these are touchscreen monitors. So I don't even need a keyboard, remote, or anything. I can just touch the screen? That's correct. You just, what's this, pictures? No, these are actually right here what we're looking at are actual album covers. This is album arts. And we actually have 46 full-length albums right here loaded on the system. So what, I can just select any of these right now? Anything you want to listen to, you can go ahead and touch the screen and select it. And the entire album right there will load oh, right in front of your that's eyes. that's nice. That's nice. So yeah. we play even the videos? Of course we can play videos in here. What we have here is these are actual full-length movies we have loaded right here on the system. So whatever we want to watch, we just push OK, and the movie will go ahead and start right up. Uh, so let me ask you a question. While I'm listening to music, can I check emails using Outlook or even Hotmail? That's correct, Greg. You're able to check your emails wherever you're at. How fast is the internet running? Well, we can reach speeds of 1.5 megabytes per second. 1.5? On the freeway. That's DSL speed. That's correct. Actually, it's broadband speed. What about navigation? Now, what's a vehicle in, in 2005 without navigation? It's like somebody still not having the microwave oven at home. Exactly. Yeah. So let's touch the screen and jump to the navigation. Ah. We have voice guided navigation right here in this vehicle. We have the entire U.S. store right on the hard drive. The entire U.S. The entire U.S. is on the hard drive. And you know what's funny? It's like I have a Mercedes, a high-end Mercedes, but yet it only gives me regional CDs. You hear that, Mercedes? This is a Honda, and they got the entire U.S. 
And this is what, a Honda Accord? This is a Honda Accord. So this is one of, you know, it's not a Bentley, it's not a Benz, it's not a Beamer, it's a simple Honda Accord. So you can do this in almost any vehicle. That, that's correct. We wanted to be a, a system that could be installed in any vehicle across the world. I gotta see this computer. Can you show me what it looks like? Sure, I can show you back. All right, so here we go. This is it? This is it. This, this is a PC. This is a PC. I see you got the CD-ROM. That's correct. Actually, to be to correct you on that one, Greg, that's actually a DVD-ROM slash CDRW. Ah. We have, we have USB ports, FireWire ports. We even have digital sound output ports. So if you have a USB port, I can plug in it like a USB Bluetooth adapter, and I can sync this computer with, let's say, my PDA phone that uses Bluetooth. That's correct. And you also sync it while you're on the freeway. This is nice. Now, to be truthful with you, Willie told me a little about the company beforehand, so you were a little modest when we were inside, just a little bit. You're actually the owner. You actually designed the system, you actually built the system, and that's correct? That's correct. I actually uh, created the system uh, about four years ago. See? And it's nice. So you're like the black Michael Dell of mobile computers. That's correct, without the uh, financials. Yeah, he ain't got the billions of dollars <laughs> yet. Okay, but you're going to get there. You're going to get there. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate it. that. I appreciate that. So, we've seen it all. From Hondas with onboard PCs to Mercedes-Benz 600s with laptop computers in the back. But did you know that BMW came out with a new 750 IL that has not one, not two, but 80 onboard computers to run it? I have Isa McKinney over in BMW Beverly Hills. So Isa, take it from there. Thanks, Greg. I'm with Mark Deutsch from Beverly Hills BMW. So Mark, what car are we looking at here? We're looking at the 2006 750. It just replaced the 745 that's been out for three years. The 750, we have a new engine, it's faster, 35 horsepower more, same gas mileage, redesigned front end, redesigned back end, and improved iDrive. So is it true that BMWs are the most technological cars on the market? Yes, the BMWs have about 80 different processors in the car. They run everything from the stereo system to the navigation to the Bluetooth to the suspension components. It has an active roll system that reduces 80% of body roll, so you can go through a turn really fast, and you can out-corner a lot of sports cars. We've got voice activation. I can just push this button. Radio. Radio menu. I, my Bluetooth phone. I can leave my phone right there, and I can just do dial number. Please say the number. And I can dial any number I want. Oh, wow, this is nice. And when a phone call comes in, the radio gets quiet. It rings. I push the button right here on the steering wheel and answer my phone calls. Don't have to take my hands off the steering wheel. I can push this button right here, and you can see here's my phone book on my phone. I can just pick anybody's name I want to dial, and I just hit it twice, and it dials that number. I can check my oil from inside with the CD changer. I can push the button, say CD changer. If I know I want to play my third disc, I say CD3, and it starts playing that CD. I even have air conditioning in here, so if I have my snack in here, it keeps it nice and cool. So how fast is the computer? It's probably on the lines faster than Pentium 4 because you don't have an operating system slowing it down. It's just direct commands, so everything gets handled very quickly. We don't have a lot of repairs on these cars. When the car comes in, generally the only thing it needs is a new upgrade in software. So we hook it up to a machine and we download the software. Well, Greg, your car is nice, but I think the BMW has you beat. Cybersecurity Minute with Gregory Evans is sponsored by Citibank. How can we help you? Place only your initials on your next check order. If someone takes your checkbook, they won't know if you sign your checks with just your initials or your full name. Your bank does know, and in most cases, they will quickly note the discrepancy and contact you immediately. When writing checks to pay credit card bills, never put the complete account number on the four line. Instead, put only the last four digits of the account number on the check. The credit card company knows the rest of the number. This prevents anyone who might be handling your check from accessing your credit card number. Never have your social security number printed on your checks. Write it by hand if necessary, but if you have it printed, anyone can get it. For more information on identity theft and other cybersecurity segments, go to www.cybersecurityminute.com. Have you ever seen a preview to a movie and you said to yourself, the day it comes out, I have to see this movie, but then you go see it and you're not happy with it, the movie was weak, it was slow, it was sorry, it just sucked, you wanted your money back by the end, the trailer was better than the movie, wasn't it? Well. Let's look at the company that actually made that trailer that fooled you in to spending that small fortune to take your girl to the movie. Follow me. What's going on, Dean Long? Greg, no how seat. are you? All right. This is Dean Black, one of the partners here at Winston Davis. 
tell them a little about what Winston Davis does and some of the things, some of the movies that you guys have um, done in the past. Right. Well, uh, Winston Davis is a motion picture marketing and advertising company. Uh, we make trailers and coming attractions for movies. Uh, and over the years, we've worked on campaigns such as Godzilla, Charlie's Angels, Spider-Man 2. Just recently, we worked on a film, Kung Fu Hustle, and we're working currently on a new comedy starring Sam Jackson called The Man, which is coming out this September. We this did. September? Yeah, this September. So Very you guys get movies before anybody else even hears about them? Yes, way before, ah. which is a great thing. We get to see all these movies. And I'll show you the place, and I'll tell you a little bit about how we do things and what the, the editing rooms are equipped with All right, well. let's, let's take a look. Okay, so we'll surprise one of my editors who doesn't know we're coming. Where? This is Richard Moreno. How you doing, know, Richard? Great, yeah. Pleased to meet you. So what is it that you, you do in here? I try to create. That's what I try to do. You try to create? Try to make something from a long piece of footage down to a short piece of footage. He's worked with full movies that are completely done. He's worked on uh, projects that have given us hundreds of hours of dailies just to compress it down to a three-minute promo. And here, this is the backbone of the entire operation. This is our machine room. All of our edit bays are controlled through the wires in the ceiling. Uh, this is a fiber optic connection to our clients. We can patch through this dub center here and our clients' television sets are patched directly in. They can see and hear everything that we're doing in the office for an instantaneous, real-time experience. So, in effect, instead of them coming to us or we go to them, they can virtually uh, direct an editing session right from their office in real time. All right, so I'll introduce you guys to Alex, who's one of our head uh, graphic designers. He's going to take you through a project that we've just done for the Seinfeld uh, on DVD series. We have three graphic workstations, and these are even more powerful than the editing machines. Okay. Alex, uh, what, what are we running here, Alex? We're running dual 2.5 gig G5s. Okay, this is nice. Now, yeah. what type of software? We're running Maya for 3D stuff, After Effects for motion graphics, and Photoshop for all like photo editing stuff. Now, what type of person might want to do something like this? What type, what would they have to learn? They'd have to know how to draw, they'd have to have a sense of color, a sense of a composition. Typography. Typography, definitely, yeah, especially for this kind of stuff we do. Top of who? Typography, typography. like what kind of fonts go well with what genre films, like comedies have certain type of fonts, horror has certain type of fonts, drama, action, they all use their own sets of fonts. Gotcha. So, now what are we looking at here? You're working on something for Seinfeld? What we're doing is we're doing the trailer and the promotions for the fifth and sixth season, which are going to be available for sale in November of this year. This sequence in our trailer is showing where the special features are. What Alex is going to show you is something that was fabricated 100% by Alex and my other team of graphic designers. So what am I looking at here? Because I see him doing a lot of moving from screen to screen. We built a 3D scene that has 3D objects of the DVD boxes inside a fridge. We place them inside to show the product. Now, do you think this is a job someone really loves? I mean, do you really love your job? I do, because of the creative control. The creative yeah. control? Yeah. Okay. All Definitely. right. Definitely. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. All right. We hear the word editor, one of the most important positions in the film industry. Today, we're going to find out exactly what an editor is, what they do, and how much they actually make. Take it over to you, Kathy. Lights, camera, action. That's what we hear and see when Hollywood movies are being made. Now, filming a movie is one thing, but putting it all together, that's a completely different thing. I'm here with Hollywood film editor Alan Ravick, and he's going to hook us up with the technology that it takes to make those blockbuster movies we all love so much. Hey, Alan, tell me exactly what does a film editor do? The editor is the person that puts together all the bits and pieces of film. When a movie's shot, it's shot not in the same order as a script, but is shot in various angles and various takes. Uh, the editor's job is to assemble all the pieces that have been shot in film and uh, try to tell a continuous story. Uh, it's very much like putting a crossword puzzle together. Now, what technology is used when making a movie? Well, both film and video are right now edited on nonlinear editing systems. Uh, the main differences with film is the film is transferred to videotape and then digitized into the editing systems to create what we call a rough cut. Once a rough cut is created, then we go back to the film and actually cut the negative to conform to our edit that we've done on the computers. Hmm. How much footage do they shoot when they're actually making a movie? Well, it's depending on the budget of the film uh, dictates how much footage is usually uh, shot. But typically, it's 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 
So for every uh, one hour, they shoot 10 hours of footage. All of that has to be edited down to make the final 90 minute to two hour motion picture. How much does an average editor make? Well, editor's salaries vary a lot. Uh, typically, uh, an editor will start out at $900 to $1,000 a week, and those salaries can go up to as much as uh, ten dollars to $15,000 a week for your major film editors. Thanks a lot, Alan. I really appreciate that. Well, we've now been hooked up on technology in the editing business. Back to you, Greg. This portion of High Tech Hookup is sponsored by Barnes & Noble. High Tech Hookup's Book of the Week is Memoirs of a High Tech Hustler. This fiction book is based on true stories about a group of African-American computer hackers who were responsible for stealing over $50 million from corporate America. Today I'm sitting here with Jahan Hughes. Now she's a cell phone expert. And we're going to go over some of the hottest phones on the market, mostly the PDA phones. But before we even start talking about the PDA phones, she's going to show us the new Razer phone. Jahan, welcome. Show us what, what we're working with here. Well, Greg, obviously you have the thinnest, flattest phone out here on the market right now. Okay. Sleek, you have a camera, speaker phone, and even Bluetooth on here. Mm -hmm. You can stick this in your suit pocket and go. You don't even know it's there. And then you have a phone that you can use overseas, internationally. Don't miss a phone call anywhere in the world. So it's using GSM network? GSM technology. Okay, okay, perfect. Now, something that this phone can do that the other ones cannot is it can stream videos. That's right. Watch TV. TV. Exactly. Live TV. So show us what the live video looks like. Prevented you then from taking your information to the FBI when they could have done something about it. So you don't have to pay your cable bill. Next time your cable company turns your cable off, it's okay. <laughs> have the family just sit on the couch around the cell phone and you guys can sit back and watch what channels? You have MSNBC on here, mm -hmm. CNN, Fox, up to 22 channels. 22 channels. 22. Soon they're going to have cell phones with the built-in video camera so when you're talking to someone on the cell phone, you can see them and they can see you in real time. Now, um... And check this out, by the way. Oh, uh, is this like a present? That. I get to keep this on? We'll talk about that. Later. Oh, okay, we'll talk about that. Now, something I want to go over, which is very important. This is my personal opinion about PDA phones. Laying here on the table are one, two, three, four, five cell phones I've bought since December of 2004. I started with the BlackBerry. BlackBerry was perfect for doing corporate emails, picking out my Hotmails and my Yahoo emails, but it didn't have the Bluetooth technology at the time. Now, while I was overseas, I visited a cell phone store there, and they had this phone here, which was the MDA phone. Really nice because the keyboard pops out, has the built-in camera, had 128 megabytes of memory. The other good thing about this phone was it ran Windows CE. It looked just like my laptop or my desktop computer, and I could do a lot of things on it. But the problem was it was always in German. I don't speak German that good, so I decided to go over to Singular when they came out with their version. Now, Singular's version I thought was identical to T-Mobile's version. It's not. This phone does not have a camera. It has 64 megabytes of RAM instead of 128 megabytes like the other one did. And it's a lot slower. So I wasn't very happy. The other problem with these PDA phones, this one and the T-Mobile version, is that sometimes if you drop your phone, your battery comes off, or you're switching batteries, all your information that's saved in the phone is erased. So that means that you have to go back to your um, computer, your laptop, your desktop, put it in the cradle, and download all your information again. That's not good if you're not near your machine. So, here Packard was saying that they came up with a cell phone. Okay, I have to try this one. Now this is the iPad cell phone. Problem with the iPad cell phone is look at it. It's bulky. Look at the keyboard. It's a detachable keyboard. Same problem though, drop your phone, battery comes off, all the information is gone. It's a bug inside of Windows, my personal opinion. So over the weekend, I went and picked up the Trio 650. Trio 650 comes with the camera, comes with the memory. It's, it's, it's running the same technology as all the other Palm PDA phones out there. It's very sophisticated. I pulled my memory chip out of the other PDA phones and I was able to just stick it right into my Trio phone. One thing I like about the Trio, it's always backing up the information, all my appointments, my contacts, my emails. And it allows me to go to a Verizon website, type in my mobile number, then a password where I have all my emails, all my phone numbers. 
so that way if I do lose my phone, I can get to another computer, look up numbers, or when I purchase a new cell phone, I can sync it with the website automatically. My personal opinion, I love this phone. As you saw in the other segment, I always carry a spare, so spare laptop, spare cell phone. So if I didn't need a PDA, this definitely would be my phone. This is Greg Evans. This is your high-tech hookup, and I'm out.